What is your take on some of the other for-profit efforts uh, that are in a similar space? So, um, well, as I mentioned, we have gener we have created some of them, um, but those are the smaller ones. You know, they're at you know, seed level and Series A level right now. I guess what you're mainly referring to is the much more conspicuous and very large efforts that have come on board over the past couple of years, um, the, um, especially Calico, the company created by Google, and also Human Longevity Inc., which were created by two of the more larger-than-life um, biotech and um, um, visionaries in this space, Peter Diam Anderson, Craig Venter. Mm -hmm. um, uh, both of those companies have a very significant place in this whole universe. Um, they don't, either of them at this point, have as big a place as they could have. Human longevity started out and are, uh, you know, very explicitly a, a normal company. You know, they are a company that wants to be profitable reasonably soon. They get investment from a wide range of different investors. They are focused on developing things that can benefit people, even if not very much, at least benefit people quite, quite, quite in the quite short term. So one can really think of human longevity as a, um, a, a leading edge personalized medicine company, a company that's trying to use all the best um, technologies that are around to identify how to optimize the use of um, the, the, the application of today's medicine, of existing medicine, so as to give it the best benefit for each individual. And that's undoubtedly valuable, but it clearly is not the holy grail of the defeat of aging because it um, can only optimize things that are um, fundamentally imperfect. Mm. Um, Co is in a very different situation. First of all, its budget is essentially unlimited, um, but and so it's not seeking investment from anybody else. Um, and secondly, it has been set up very explicitly to tackle the long-term um, question of aging, to really bring aging under control. Unfortunately, at this point, Calico is proving to be a massive disappointment not because the work it's doing is in some way, you know, um, short-sighted, but rather that it's too long-sighted. In other words, they are kind of ignoring all of the promise that exists in the research that's already been done, all of the ways in which we might put together current knowledge into new medicines that attack aging more comprehensively than medicines that exist today. The... Um, way that they're approaching things is basically to take the view that we just don't have nearly enough initial basic knowledge yet. We need to understand aging much, much better before we can even think about how to apply that understanding therapeutically. Hmm. And I believe that is completely wrong. I believe that it is a point of view uh, based on basically having hired the wrong people at the top, hmm. having hired especially uh, their chief science officer, David Botstein, who is an emeritus professor from Princeton, very, very smart guy, no question, but he is a basic scientist through and through. He understands the value of knowledge, and that's pretty much the only thing he understands the value of. So he will never feel that we have enough knowledge. And you don't want someone like that if you want to save lives. That, that's interesting. In, in an interview I was reading uh, with you, you kind of talked about the difference um, between the science and the technology uh, approach. That You're saying that there is a difference between trying to pursue understanding something and trying to pursue doing something about it. Absolutely. The difference is huge. And I didn't understand this at all until I started to talk to my wife back in the early 90s about the problem of aging. You know, she was saying, as I mentioned earlier, she was saying that it wasn't interesting, it wasn't very exciting, it wasn't very important. And I was saying, but 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 it kills people. You know, I mean, what the hell? Um, <laughs> and and it was only then that I began to see the profundity of the mindset chasm that exists between basic scientists who want to understand things and technologists who want to manipulate things for human benefit. Hmm. It's just like, and the worst of it is that almost all basic scientists fail to see this chasm. They think that technology is easy and it just kind of falls, falls into place as a kind of, you know, immediate side effect of finding things out. Hmm. And they, you know, they kind of just don't get it. 